What's going on, everybody? Lil Chris here, and it certainly has been a while since I've recorded a video for y'all, as I've been doing a bunch of live streams of me playing straight pool. But we can't forget about the other games, like nine ball. So in today's video, I have this progressive nine ball exercise that I would like you to try. It'll help you improve your breaks, be able to run out different types of layouts, and eventually be able to break and run a nine ball rack. And the best thing about this exercise is that you get to decide the level of difficulty on how you're going to progress. So let's get started so I can show you what I mean. Now this exercise has seven levels for you to progress through and each level always begins with the break. And that's how you're going to be able to improve your breaks. Now it's entirely up to you how you want to break this nine ball rack. And what I mean by that is, do you want to break soft, medium, or hard? Do you want to use the three point rule or not? But whatever you decide to do, try to do that for each level. Now, if you've been following me long enough, you should know that when I break a nine ball rack, I typically try to satisfy the three point rule. So my break is around medium to medium hard, which usually averages to about 11 to 12 miles per hour. All right, so in this case, we certainly satisfied the three point rule since I made three balls on the break and even the seven ball across the head string. So now for level one, what I'm gonna do here is remove some balls off the table, but I want at least three remaining on the table. And since we're playing nine ball, the nine ball always needs to remain on the table. So I just need to figure out what two do I also want to be with the nine ball. So when you think about it, this is what allows you to control the difficulty of the layout pattern. So if I wanna be able to hopefully easily get through this rack, then what I might do is keep the three ball since that's gonna be the first ball I'm gonna start with, which means I'm gonna remove the two. The seven ball being so close to the three ball means I won't have to do a whole lot of movement. So that means I'm gonna remove the five and the six. And this is pretty much what I'm left with for level one. Now, why only three balls? Well, typically when you're playing pool, you always hear the concept of think two balls ahead. So this is why this is the first level of the seven that I'm gonna demonstrate. So from here, let's see if I can run this out. I'm actually gonna try to play the three in the corner so that way I can have the cue ball come off the side rail and come back a little bit for position on the seven. And then from the seven here, I can have the cue ball come off of the short rail and then with some left spin, come over here to the side rail to get position on the nine for this corner here. And I'll play the nine ball in the corner pocket. All right, so that seems fairly easy, right? Well, think about it. Instead of making a layout that's that easy to run, you can challenge yourself by making the layout a little bit harder. And then if you also want to, you can even take ball in hand after the break. Like I said, the level of difficulty of your progression is gonna be entirely in your control. But let's move on to level two. Now for level two, we're pretty much going to do the same thing. The only thing that's gonna be different is we're gonna have four balls left on the table after the break. Now I do want you to notice though, is that I've racked these balls in the same order as I did the previous level, which I do actually encourage that way you can study how the balls spread after the break. But if you do wanna add more difficulty to this exercise, you can certainly give yourself a random rack on each level. All right, so we satisfied the three-point rule on this break. So let's choose 
what four balls we want to remain on the table. I'm going to take away the eight. Let's take away the six. The two and the three. So here we're left with the one, five, seven, and nine. So I don't need ball in hand because I already have a shot on the one ball. But all I can do is really follow the cue ball forward a little bit to about right here. So I have a long cut shot on the five ball to try to get position on the seven. I can try to draw off of the one, but I'm going to run into the seven, which means the seven might actually get in my way if I try to get position on the five. So I just want to eliminate that risk altogether and just take what the table gives me. Now from the five to the seven, I just want the cue ball to come off of the side rail here and come back towards the middle of the table. Well, not quite towards the middle of the table, but I have a shot at the seven because now I can just shoot the seven in that corner, have the cue ball come off of the short rail, and then work its way up here to play the nine in this corner here. And there's level two. Now, for some players, even a layout like that might be difficult. But that's why it's completely up to you on what type of layout you want to have after the break. It basically allows you to simulate what you're going to deal with when your opponent misses. And that's the layout that you have to try to run out. But then when you get all the way up to level seven, that's when you're basically trying to break and run a rack. So now let's move on to the next level. So now you should understand how this exercise is going to work. So for levels three through five, I'm just going to try to run through them without any commentary, but then I'll give you a full breakdown of level six and level seven. So here's level three with five balls on the table. Here's level four with six balls left on the table. Thank you. 
And here's level five with seven balls on the table. So as you can see, each level can be as difficult as you want it to be or as easy as you want it to be, all really depending upon how the ball spread after the break, and then of course which balls you take off the table, and then whether or not if you take ball in hand. Now, so far, I haven't had the need to take ball in hand. But now here on level six, we're gonna try to have eight balls remaining left on the table, which pretty much simulates what a break and run would typically look like if you're using a template rack because we all know that the wing ball from whatever side that you break from has a tendency to go straight towards the corner pocket. And since I'm breaking on my left side of the table, I'm always expecting for that four ball to fall into the corner pocket. But then if you've been watching the way I've been breaking on each level, and then of course, if you've been following the channel, you should know that I have a high predictability of knowing where all balls are gonna go after the break. Because I've been trying to consistently get the one ball to pass the side pocket, catch this side rail, and land somewhere over here for this corner pocket. To have the three ball bank off the side rail and then head towards this side pocket, and sometimes it falls. The six ball dribbles out of the rack and usually lands somewhere right around here. The four ball, we already know, goes towards the corner pocket. The nine ball really doesn't go anywhere. The seven ball banks three rails around and sometimes can have a collision over here. And if it has a collision, then it tends to head towards this corner pocket, sometimes it falls. 
If it avoids a collision, then it usually heads towards the side pocket. The eight ball will bank off the short rail and then come over towards the side rail, and that's where the collision with the seven can occur. Because if that collision occurs, then the eight ball gets kicked off of this side rail and then heads over here where it could be parked next to the five ball that also banks off the short rail and then stops somewhere right around here. And both the five and the eight will be set up for that corner pocket. While the two ball banks off of the short rail and then heads towards this corner pocket. So as long as I break this correctly, and it really doesn't matter if more balls drop and there's not eight balls left on the table because you get the idea, but really we want to see if we can just get the four ball to drop and see if I can get all the other eight balls to go where I'm predicting them to go. So as you can see, the only thing that was a little bit different was when the two collided with the six, because the six came right out of the rack as expected. The two banked off the short rail, but then collided with the six and sent it down here, which is why the two balls up table. Now, I didn't really have good control of my cue ball because look where my one ball's at. So instead of shooting it here, I'll end up shooting it here. Everything else is pretty much where I expected it to be. So we can try to shoot the one ball into the corner pocket, have the cue ball come off of the short rail and head towards this way to get position on the two. Now here, I'm naturally gonna run into the side rail. So the question becomes, do I wanna just come out here to play the three in this corner pocket or just keep on coming to where I can play the three in the side pocket? Either one really works. Okay, so from this position, I can actually do either one. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cut the three into the side pocket, which means my cue ball goes down table. So I need to come off the short rail and head towards the middle of the table to get position on the five. Now with where the six is and the cut angle that I have on the five, I can cut the five into the corner pocket and try to get the cue ball to go one, two, and possibly three rails to get position here on the six. Now I ended up a little flat on the six, which isn't really all that good because if I was right here, then I can just shoot the six into the corner, come off the short rail with some left spin to get position on the seven. But with as flat as I am, and what I mean by flat is I'm a little straight on the six ball. So what I'm gonna try to do is follow after the six and catch this rail with some right spin and try to come out towards the middle of the table to get position on the seven. Now you can see here, I have a small angle, so the cue ball will be coming off the rail. So if I just draw the cue ball back and land anywhere right here, I'm in good shape for the eight. And again, I have a cut angle, so my cue ball automatically goes to the side rail, so I can try to just draw back slightly to get flat on the nine. And here we are on level seven. Now you might be wondering, what the heck do you do on level seven when you just broke and ran an entire rack on level six? Well, in case you haven't already noticed, 
I removed the magic rack from the table. So now I am no longer guaranteed to make the wing ball into the corner pocket, nor can I highly predict where all nine balls will go after the break. And now there's a good possibility I could break dry, which pretty much emulates the scenario of your opponent breaking dry and you getting a chance to come to the table to try and run the table. Now, if you happen to make a ball on the break at this level, just go ahead and try to run the table anyway, because this level is designed for you to either break and run or rack and run. Now, because we used a regular rack on this one, I am going to be breaking a little bit harder. Now, I was still fortunate to make the four ball into the corner pocket, but we also saw that I got the five ball to go into the corner pocket, and then the one ball went into the side pocket. And the one ball is actually still the most predictable ball that you can actually control to try to get it to go into the side pocket off of the break. Now, I've got a rather difficult layout here because of my shot at the two. I am gonna try to cut it into the side pocket. And I will more than likely come behind the three ball and bump into it. I might have a shot at the three for this corner pocket here. And actually, I have a shot at the three for either of the corner pockets. And instead, I think I'm going to shoot it into this corner pocket. It looks like the cue ball can naturally come over to the side rail. So I think I'm going to try to get it to spin over to the short rail and come back out towards the middle of the table to see if I can get position on the six. Okay, I'm going to be elevated over the eight ball, and I have a small angle on the six, so hopefully I can try to stun the cue ball out this way for position on the seven for the corner pocket. Okay, now from here, I think I'm going to try to shoot the seven in the corner, push the cue ball up to the short rail, and then have it come towards the middle of the table for position on the eight. And now with the position that I have on the eight, there is a small cut angle. So I think I'm going to try to push the cue ball to the short rail, have it come all the way back down here for the nine ball in this corner pocket. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now, I hope that you're going to be able to find this exercise useful because I personally know how frustrating it can be to continuously try to break and run a nine ball rack and continuously fail, which is pretty much what I went through when I was trying to record level seven until I eventually got it done. But hopefully you can see the benefits of this exercise and each level because levels one, two, and three are designed to give you the experience of what it might be like when your opponent misses in the middle of the rack and you have whatever layout that you gave yourself to be able to try to run the table. Levels four, five, and six are pretty much designed of what it might be like to break and run an entire table, all depending upon how many balls you can actually make on the break. 
while level seven pretty much gives you the realism of being able to try to break and run a rack or rack and run a rack. Because more times than not, you're not going to have a template rack at your local pool hall. So give this exercise a try and let me know what you think. And if you like what you saw here, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and then be sure to click the bell notification icon to be notified whenever I go live or publish a new video. Take care, everybody.